So there we go. Right, something I've prepared now is it's still a little bit flat. There's not a lot of depth. You can see I've painted in a little corner of sky up there. I think that's working well. I like that. But using, you can see here I've got some layers, using some uh, screen layers, make one visible. Currently it's invisible. There we go. Oh, I've hit it twice. It will disappear again. Let's bring it back. I've added in a little bit of atmospheric perspective. Just it's a it's a pale blue, and I've erased. I filled the whole layer and erased away the areas that I wanted to stay. The color they are now, where the pale blue stays, that's just pushing everything back into the distance. So it's just covering the trees and actually the far fence. I wanted to put a bit of distance behind the, this roundhouse and the far fence. So here it comes again. There we go. And then another one that just very subtly cools the whole thing down. You might not even pick that up. I'm not sure in, uh, uh, at the recording resolution. But I just felt when I looked at the image this morning, it was a bit too pink, a bit too saturated. So there's a general blue, little sort of blue um, filter over the top of everything just to cool it down a little bit. I can always bring back the saturation where, where I choose to put it in, but just generally want to push it all back a little bit, bring a bit more air into the image, a bit more space. So there we go, and we'll flatten all of those. Again, a lot of people keep these kind of layers going. You can build up hundreds of layers if they've got a powerful enough computer, but not me. I like to, to work quite simply on, on one layer as much as possible. So there we go there, it's flattened down now. now I'm really into mo pretty much everything is kind of painted in the, in the, in a basic sense now, so it's now a case of just tightening up, adding details, getting things looking how I want them to look. I'll use a mixture of um, opaque and opaque media and washes. I'm going to use kind of sitting in between opaque media and washes is is the the ink pen in Art Rage Three, which is a really nice tool. It's very like. Sorry, this is a bit techy. If you're not if you're not an illustrator watching this, so apologies for the amount of techy stuff. But it, but I think it is of interest to to any uh, artists and illustrators who happen to see this. The ink pen in Art Rage Three is very like the um, round, simple round brush in Photoshop, and it just puts down a very clean, round, hard line. You can adjust the opacity. Now that's where it kind of sits between a wash and opaque media in the. Uh, it is opaque, but you can have it set to a low opacity, so it's it's translucent. So it's not transparent like a wash. It just adds in a little bit of the colour that you can kind of see through. The underlying colour pokes through enough that we're not laying down really hard marks over the top. And I find this to be an excellent detail tool. As you can see, and you can just tighten up. Some of the edges I want tightened up. Some of them, not so much. So just areas that are, are definitely meant to be a focus of the image, like like the doorway to the main roundhouse here is, is a natural focus for the image. So this will have quite tight levels of detail, quite tight edges, strong contrasts. That all draws the eye. There's a funny little thing I was thinking as I was, uh, I wanted to mention as I was working earlier on, that just building up a little bit of kind of detritus around the bases of things gives a building an age and it looks like it hasn't just been beamed down to rest where it is just five minutes before. So just I just build up, zoom in so you can really see what I'm doing, just build up little marks that just break up that bottom edge. Just clumps of grass and maybe stones and just an unevenness building up. I did a lot around the base of some some of the stockade earlier on. Just just here, you can see I just using the oil brush that time. Just build it up so it's kind of shows a little bit of passing time. I don't think anyone's going to look at it and think, "Oh yes, time has passed." Because look look at that broken outline around the bottom. But it it, it works. I think um, overall it helps build up the the feel that I want to give that this place has been here for a while. You know, the Bjornings aren't necessarily an ancient, ancient culture within Middle Earth, but, but this building wants to have been there, you know, a generation or two. 
and again, that kind of feels right as well. There's, it's always important to balance, I think, the, the feel of something and how it should be kind of factually. A good example to illustrate that is if, for example, you're painting a castle. Um, we're all very used to castle. Those of us who are lucky enough to, to live in, in countries with castles, we're seeing, you know, in Europe. Um, we're used to seeing them quite uh, dirty, um, run down, mm, run down's not fair, but, uh, you know, worn, worn in, if you like, hundreds of years old. Uh, but, of course, when they were newly built at the time of, you know, in, in after 1066, when, when Norman, the, the Norman Conquest and uh, William was building, William the Conqueror was building all these castles, um, they would have been brand new, you know, brand new cut stone. They would have looked very clean. However, to the viewer, that would look wrong. It wouldn't. It wouldn't seem right um, to to have these kind of shiny, brand new castles. I think you could make an illustration that, that that was about that. Absolutely, you know, if you were making the point. But if it's just a side issue, sometimes it's better to go with the feel. So anytime I'm painting a castle, I'm going to make it look worn, because otherwise it will stand out that it's new. And if I'm not making a deliberate point that it's a brand new fortification, then I want to just weather it in a little bit. So the same goes for this fence here. I don't want it to look like it just fell to earth. I want it to, to have some age to it. Now I can see this stockade is going to take me um, quite a lot of work to get it how I want it to look. The reference here of the uh, the Cranog on Mokte is... Uh, is a very handy one just with these these poles here I like the slight bend to some of them and the little details there's just little knots and you can see where branches have been cut off that's all useful information that you might not be able to come up with yourself so interesting how sharp this thatch is here well here we are right at the end of this little feature presentation. This is the piece of work as it finally ended up. I don't think a great deal happened um, after the last piece of work that I recorded. Uh, general tightening up of tones. I use uh, the usually use the layers menu in Photoshop just to play a little bit with my tones. Uh, and I'm looking back now with the benefit of probably about a month since the piece was finished. And as ever, I can see some things that I would like to change, but it's in and approved and uploaded to the publisher, so it's too late for that. <laughs> and that's just something that you kind of get used to, I guess. Working professionally, you've got to let things go, otherwise I could just paint and paint and paint. And hopefully part of the aim is to, is to always be improving your work, so anything older than, than a week or two you can always just see a whole bunch of flaws. But um, overall, I'm happy with this one. Uh, yeah, of course, you can see and added a few figures, which is always good for indicating scale. That's really made these into, into uh, large roundhouses rather than, you know, we could have been of inter intermediate size without these little figures here. And I think they bring the thing to life a little bit as well. Looking back, I'm surprised I didn't put any birds in this. I've been putting birds in almost all the illustrations. No birds in this one. Perhaps I'll have to sneak a few in and re-upload it. So yeah, there we have it. That pretty much shows my whole process, and well done you if you've stuck with uh, all ten videos. Some amount of perseverance you've got. I hope it wasn't too waffly. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Beyonding Settlement, start to finish. Good luck.